guys, welcome back. It is freezing cold outside. My kids are downstairs watching a Christmas movie and I just wanted to get on here today and open up to you guys about some suckier things that are happening in my life that have become very all encompassing. To be honest, like I didn't think that I even wanted to talk about it at all, but that's what I've done for 15 years. You guys have seen all my ups and downs for the entire time I've been on YouTube, like half of my life from college to my single life in LA to getting married and having my first baby, having my infertility thing, having my second baby. And I came on here a couple months ago and I posted a video back, you know, saying I'd had my baby and I was in this amazing place mentally, physically, like I was living life. I was on a high point just a couple of months ago. When I posted that video, I fully intended to be back to work in terms of taking on sponsorships and on my sticker shop and all of that. Like I was feeling great, I was ready to come back. And I posted those videos and I started kind of trying to gear up my sticker shop again because that had also slowed down a lot during my maternity leave, which was planned. And then I started just not feeling well. My physical health started to become apparent that something was wrong and I do have to kind of take you back a little bit because this actually started a few years ago we just didn't know we didn't know it and so I don't think I ever talked about this on a video on this channel I did talk about it at the time as it was happening on my planner channel so if you were following my glam planner videos my plan with me's and stuff I did talk about it during those weeks in those spreads when I was about seven months postpartum with James I woke up one morning and I had some incredible unexplained foot pain in one of my feet. Like I woke up and I couldn't walk. Just all of a sudden, one of my feet, like I could barely put any pressure on it. And I basically was just like limping around. It was really weird too, because I couldn't remember like if I had dropped something on it, did I break some little bone in there? I didn't know, I couldn't figure it out. And I kind of just decided I would just kind of wait it out. I didn't go to the doctor right away because I kind of thought I had maybe sprained it or, you know, worn a weird shoe. As the weeks went on and my foot wasn't getting better, I finally became a little more alarmed. I decided to go to a doctor and get some answers. They ran a ton of tests on me. We did x-rays of my feet. I ended up being referred to another doctor and went to that doctor and had more tests run, all the blood tests, all the, anything they could think of, they did. And they couldn't figure out what was wrong with my foot. Um, the only thing that was flagged up in all of that blood work, all of those tests was high inflammation markers. So I had a high CRP and I had a high SED rate. I do remember mentioning that a little bit because that was actually why I gave up Diet Coke and sodas in general was back when I had all of that stuff going on. And I remember mentioning that I had given it up because I was trying to get healthier and that I had these high inflammation markers, but they weren't like so high that it was a definite concern. It wasn't like, okay, something's out of control in your body. These numbers are horrible, something's wrong. It was more like they're higher than normal, it was left very unexplained, I was never diagnosed with anything. It was just something that happened and it lasted for several months. And then one day I woke up and it was the other foot. I sound crazy because that is not something that you would see if you had broken it, sprained it, if you had a tendon that was stretched or a ligament or something that you've done something weird to on one foot, you wouldn't wake up one day and it'd be the other foot just out of nowhere. So we knew we were dealing with something weird, but all I know is that after months and months and months of limping on one foot and then limping on the other foot, it eventually just went away and it never bothered me again. Around that time of it kind of feeling better and going away, I started trying for baby number two and that led us into the entire infertility journey that was those years, the worst years of my life. I feel like 2020 and 2021 were just horrible with miscarriages and losses and weird complications if you watched those videos. And throughout all of that, you know, I never had any issues with my feet again. I was obviously extremely stressed and dealing with all of the infertility stuff. And that is not connected to what's happening now, just so you know. Honestly, it was like pretty just bad luck of just really horrible losses that were not connected to each other or to this. So I just wanted to throw that out there. But I had that whole thing. I finally got pregnant with hubby ended up having him in April of this year, seven months postpartum again with this baby. I woke up one morning and it was back. And this time it was in my hands, not my feet. I'm having trouble with typing everyday stuff, designing my sticker kits, 
which is all on the computer. And luckily it's in my left hand, not my right. Of course, if it is what happened before, it could just switch hands. So I ended up going back to a new doctor, I actually was diagnosed with something and it is an autoimmune thing and it's high inflammation and it can really like affect any part of your body and it shows my feet last time, my hands this time. It is um, something that can show up postpartum. So a lot of the autoimmune issues can have big flares when you're postpartum and that's something that is seen across a lot of different autoimmune diseases. Um, and this is one that is known to flare up postpartum. I am being put on a medication that will probably be a lifelong maintenance medication. I have been put on a low gluten, low dairy, low sugar diet. Those are the three most common diet triggers for inflammation levels. I don't have celiac, so I'm not like, I don't need to go gluten free. I'm not lactose intolerant. I don't need to go completely dairy free where like, it's not in anything that I eat, but I am switching to gluten-free foods for the most part and dairy-free foods. If it's something that's in something that's already cooked, I'm eating it. I'm not completely cutting it out because also I don't want to build sensitivities by never having anything. Every single thing that I put into my body has changed over the last month and it's very overwhelming. It's, um, it's just a, it's a lot just thrown at me at once. I actually have a new sponsor that I'm starting to work with in January that is gonna help with a lot of this, which is really random and completely coincidental. But thank goodness for that because I am having to rewrite what my day-to-day -day looks like um, on a dime, not just what I'm eating, but like what I'm able to do. And it's just, it's really overwhelming. For several years now, I have felt like I've been spreading myself too thin. I've talked about this a lot. I think my new year's resolution for like the last few years has been for a better work-life balance. I think that I put a lot of unrealistic expectations on myself with what I want to accomplish every week. And what ends up happening is I never accomplish it because it's unrealistic. And so I just beat myself up over it and I try harder the next week and I still don't accomplish it because again, it's unattainable. It's not something I can accomplish. And instead of trying to cut things back, which I really have trouble doing. Cause like if I decide I wanna do a certain thing, then that's what I am trying to do over and over again and failing at it week after week. Through this, through this experience of like basically having my health decline on a dime and having to completely rework my whole life and how I live my day-to-day -day life, I am going to be taking a really hard look at what I do with my hours every day and figure out what makes sense because for the last several years my sticker shop has taken the majority of my hours when i first started my shop first of all i was like not even engaged yet i was living by myself i had all the time in the world i would pull all-nighters all the time and just design non-stop and create new stuff and make new stickers and experiment and do all this stuff and create these videos around them. And it was so much fun. And I would do like, I think at the beginning I was releasing like one new collection every couple weeks. And then I remember when it got to the point where I was doing a collection every week, that was like, that was a lot. I remember thinking like, I was just pumping out so much new stuff and it was amazing. And as time's gone on, I feel like the amount of stuff that I'm trying to create and release, I mean, it got up to the point where I was like doing three or four collections a week and it was taking up all of my time. And on top of that, so I was adding more and more work and more and more layers onto what I was trying to do. And in the meantime, my life outside of that was also growing. You know, I was, I got married, I had my first baby, I had my second baby. And all of a sudden I'm in this cycle of having this laundry list of things I was trying to accomplish every week. And also my outside life growing and needing more attention and me wanting to give that part of my life more and I just was stretched so thin for so long. And that's why YouTube has really been put on the back burner. Like, I'm sorry guys, but I mean, it has. That has taken over so much of my life over the last six years that my YouTube channel was kind of like secondary. It used to be the YouTube channel was it. Like that was, that was my whole life. And then the sticker shop took over and it's so hard because even right now sitting here talking to you guys about this, I don't know what I'm gonna do because I still, I still really like it. I still enjoy it. I still 
enjoy doing the sticker spreads, which is what started it all, like the memory planning. And I like it. I still do it for fun on my own, like off camera for myself because it's still something I love. And I think that just the way I've grown how I do it is like not working for me anymore. So I don't know. It's like, how do you balance everything in your life when you enjoy and want to do all the parts still and you want to give more of yourself to each of them when really what you need to be doing is pulling back and giving less of yourself to all of them because you actually have so little for yourself that your health is declining. <laughs> um, because apparently stress is like a huge trigger for this and lack of sleep and lack of like proper um, like scheduling, like just proper, not scheduling, that's not the right word, but like, I guess structure in your life, routine. I am leaving for a couple days to go home for Christmas and I am going to take the rest of this year off of all work. I'm not going to be doing releases probably. I have a couple things that I'll put up that are like my last things for the year. And then I'm going to take a true time off, which I never do that where I'm like not working on anything when it comes to either the sticker shop or YouTube videos or social media or Instagram or anything. And I am just going to read a lot and watch Christmas movies and spend time with my kids and my family. I didn't want to go home and not address any of this to you guys because I just feel like it's already been a really long time since my last video. And I wasn't gonna even say anything about all of this and then I thought, no, that I, I should because you guys have followed me for a really long time and even though I know I don't have to tell you things, I feel like in some strange way you guys have earned it with your loyalty. So anyway, I'm gonna go. I'm going to pack up and head home and just take some time off of everything. I know you guys want to see the name story time video. I will be doing that. I promise. I was going to try to film it today after filming this video, but honestly, I'm not feeling up for just doing like a really silly story time video. So I'm going to save it, but I will tell you guys that story in the new year. I'm hoping to feel better. I'll be on my new medication and um, I'm hoping this break will do me well mentally. I'm, I'm going to do like nothing. I'm just going to hang out with my kids and read books and take lots of naps. I might do that. So, okay. I hope you guys have a great holiday. I will see you in the new year. I'm planning on putting a video up that first week of January. I'm hoping to be able to put up lots of videos in 2023 and let it be a little bit of a video comeback because holy moly, I did not put up videos this year. Um, I did not mean for that to happen the way it did. 2022 has been a very strange year for health. Now that I'm thinking about that, I'm wondering if all that pelvic pain at the end of pregnancy is somehow related to this. I don't think so because I think a lot of people have pelvic pain, but like that was a really weird thing at the beginning of the year too, if you watched my last video. Anyway, okay. I will see you guys in 2023. Have a great new year and Christmas and or whatever holiday you celebrate and I will see you then. Goodbye.